Welcome! Today we are presenting optimization problems for benchmarking the Hybrid Solver Service version 2 and the Advantage Quantum Processing Unit. Presented from the Supercomputing Center in Forschungszentrum Jülich. The three different optimization problems we are looking at are vegetable garden optimization through satisfiability and tail assignment. At the end, we will be presenting the conclusions we have drawn from our benchmarking. This work is a team effort and these are the team members. We look at our first problem, vegetable garden optimization. Suppose there is a keen gardener who would like to plant different species of fruits or vegetables. Every garden knows the importance of planting the right species in the right conditions. Our gardener here would also like to plant different plant species such that they do not fight amongst each other, for example for space or nutrients. We want the species to maintain the best relationship amongst each other. For example, this matrix shows three species where tomato and cucumber do not get along. Hence, we would prefer that they are not planted next to each other. Thus, the real-world application we are looking at is companion planting in polyculture vegetable gardens. And the problem at hand is to find an optimal placement of plants in the garden considering the characteristics of the nearest neighbors. The problem we are looking at is a quadratic assignment problem with constraints where we want to assign plants to pots in the garden such that when a given qubit x is set to 1, the corresponding species is placed in a certain pot. Additionally, we want that all plants should have a good relationship with their neighbors, as well as use all available plants and pots. Also, we would like that big plants shouldn't shadow small ones. Mathematically, this problem is written like this, where we wish to minimize the function on top subject to the three constraints at the bottom, where n is the number of pots in the garden, t the number of plant species to place, j the connectivity between plots, c the relationship between species, cj the number of plants of species, and sj the size of species j. This problem has the benefit that we can have a flexible problem size depending on how many plants and pots we choose to optimize. These problems require an embedding on the quantum devices we implement them on. Here are the results of smaller problems consisting of 4 to 256 variables tested on Advantage and D-Wave 2000Q, where we record the success rate under increasing relative chain strength and annealing times. We also seek to observe the influence of Advantage's extra couplers on the success rate when Chimera embedding is on Advantage, Chimera embedding is on D-Wave 2000Q, and Pegasus embedding is on Advantage. Here are the results. The top charts show on the y-axis the success rate and on the x-axis the relative chain strength. For the blue curves which refer to Chimera embedding on advantage, the orange ones which refer to D-Wave 2000Q and the green ones which refer to advantage. The bottom plots show the success rate on the y-axis and the annealing time on the x-axis. The observations we make are Embeddings with up to 196 or 64 variables are possible on Advantage or D-Wave 2000Q. The runs are successful for up to 64 variables. Tuning the relative chain strength increases the success rate. Tuning the annealing times increases the success rate, especially on Advantage. As problems get bigger, the gap between chain lengths for Chimera and Pegasus embeddings grows. Therefore, advantages potential becomes visible in larger problems.
For up to 36 variable problems, we can see how D-Wave 2000Q mostly outperforms Advantage. Whereas, for 64 variables, Advantage has a significantly shorter embedding and this reflects on the better results obtained. Next, we implement bigger problems consisting of 4 to 2520 variables on the Hybrid Solver Service version 1 and version 2. The experiments we performed had 1760 problems which were solved using QBSolve, the legacy software solver, Hybrid Solver Service version 1, the current Hybrid Solver, and Hybrid Solver Service version 2, the new Hybrid Solver. These are the results. On the upper three plots, we plot the energy on the y-axis and the number of variables on the x-axis. On the bottom plot, we plot the comparison between hybrid solver service version 1 and version 2 where the color scheme of the points encode different number of variables used. This table shows the timing for 2520 variable problems with default parameters. The observations made are Hybrid Solver Service version 1 and version 2 are better and faster than QBSolve. Hybrid Solver Service version 2 performs better at smaller problems. Hybrid Solver Service version 1 is better at bigger problems. The next problem we benchmark is to satisfiability. It is a computational problem of assigning values to variables, each of which has two possible values, such that we satisfy certain constraints. Mathematically, it is formulated as follows. Our task is to find assignment to x that makes the function true. To implement this problem on a quantum device, we need to reformulate it in terms of an easing problem. The easing Hamiltonian is given by the sum of m Hamiltonians each multiplied with its own corresponding scaling factor. As an example, consider the clause x1 intersection x2, where the Hamiltonian is written like this. The problems we have chosen consist of 18 variables with 19 clauses. Our chosen problems have the properties that they have a known unique ground state and a highly degenerate first excited state. We show the results by plotting the success rate of 1000 different two set problems with the reformulation such that the scaling factor is set to 1. The results for all the problems are these where we plot on the y axis the success rate on Pegasus on the x-axis the success rate on Chimera. The problems with direct mapping gave the following results. We note that 476 problems on the D-Wave 2000Q and 923 problems on Advantage have a direct mapping. Advantage performs better for a majority of the problems, especially the difficult ones. Lastly, the largest enhancement is seen for the cases with no direct mapping on Chimera but those having a direct mapping on Pegasus. This improvement is due to increased connectivity. Next, we benchmark the success rate of two chosen two set problems for reformulation such that the scaling factor is random. First, the result for the hard problem. Now the results for the easy problem. We note that for a hard problem, advantage performs better, which can be seen on the left plot where the red points are above the blue line. And for an easy problem, D-Wave 2000Q performs better, which can be seen on the right plot where the red points are below the blue line. Further, we try multi-copy problems, the purpose of which 
is to utilize the capacity of advantage with a large number of qubits, copies of the two set problems are submitted to the system. Then the copies are connected through one bond to form a chain of copies, which becomes the new multi-copy problem. These have again the property that they have a unique ground state, which is a combination of the ground states for each copy for a certain range of bond strengths. Now we show the results of implementing these multi-copy problems which are not connected to one another. On the y-axis, we plot the number of occurrences and on the x-axis, we plot the number of simultaneous ground states. The colored points show different number of copies and the solid lines the corresponding binomial distribution. We note that the number of logical qubits ranges from 180 to 900. The occurrence of number of simultaneous ground states approximately follows binomial distribution. This can be seen by the observation that each colored point fits very closely to its corresponding solid line. Here we note that no state with simultaneous ground states for all copies could be found. Thus, we can say that parts of the solver corresponding to each copy work almost independently of each other. Next, we show the results of implementing the connected multi-copy problems. First, the results for 10 copies, which have 180 logical qubits, where each color represents a different bond strength. Next, for 50 copies, which had 900 logical qubits, these are the results. We note that ground state for the new problems could not be found. However, the hybrid solver version 2 could found the ground state. The last benchmarking problem we look at is the tail assignment problem. It finds real-world applications in, for example, airline planning. Mathematically, it is a linear assignment problem, which involves minimizing this function subject to this constraint. The function may encode the cost of assigning aircrafts to routes, and the constraint may encode, for example, that each aircraft has a unique route. To implement this problem on a quantum device, we once again need to reformulate this into an easing problem, which is done as follows. On the left hand side is the original problem, and on the right hand side is the corresponding easing Hamiltonian. We implement problems on 25 to 40 qubits which are almost fully connected, and on 50 to 120 qubits which are sparsely connected. Each of these problems require an embedding on the quantum device. We have done this in collaboration with these collaborators. We show results first for simple problems which consist of 25 qubits. On the y-axis we plot the success rate and on the x-axis the index of each of 10 different embeddings that we used. Each embedding was implemented using three different relative chain strengths on both Chimera and Pegasus. The red color is for Chimera and blue is for Pegasus. The observations we make are, firstly, embeddings on Chimera sometimes give a low success rate, which can be seen from these red points. Embeddings on Pegasus have on average a high success rate, which can be seen that the blue points are very close to 1 on the success rate axis. However, if the embeddings for Chimera is good, then Chimera outperforms Pegasus, which can be seen when the red points are above blue ones. From these results, we conjecture that additional unused couplers on Pegasus may disturb the annealing process. 
Next, we implement harder problems, which consist from 30 to 40 qubits and have about 90% non-zero couplers. We scan 10 different embeddings and 20 relative chain strengths. On Chimera and Pegasus, for 30, 36 and 40 qubits. Here are the results for Chimera and here are the results for Pegasus. We make the observations that, in general, Pegasus performs better than Chimera, which can be seen by observing that as the number of qubits are increased, the peaks in the graphs are higher for Pegasus than for Chimera. And the peaks shift to the left. For Chimera, peaks are close to 0.4, while on Pegasus they are close to 0.2. Thus, it can be seen that optimal chain strength is smaller for Pegasus than for Chimera. These hard problems of 30 to 40 qubits having around 90% non-zero couplers, we choose the best embedding and the chain strength that we found and perform a scan of the annealing time. We do this for 30, 36 and 40 qubits and here are the results, where we plot on the y-axis the success rate and on the x-axis the annealing time in microseconds. The blue curve corresponds to Pegasus and the red one corresponds to Chimera. We make the observations that the success rate increases as annealing time is increased, which can be seen in all the three plots. Finally, that larger 30 to 40 qubits problems have a clear advantage on the T-wave advantage. Next, we implement 50 to 120 qubit problems which are larger but sparse and have around 20% non-zero couplers. We show the results for the fastest successful runs that could reproducibly give a solution. On the top, we plot on the y-axis the QPU access time in seconds and on the x-axis the number of qubits. In the bottom plot, we plot on the y-axis the success rate. For Chimera, which is in color red, and Pegasus, which is in blue. For six different instances. We make the observations that Pegasus solves larger problems. Pegasus solves problems faster. If Chimera can solve a problem, the success rate is sometimes higher. From our benchmarking, we draw the following conclusions. On the Advantage Quantum Processing Unit, problems that are hard enough to make use of the many additional couplers on Pegasus, have embeddings with smaller chain lengths on Pegasus than Chimera, show a clear advantage on the D-Wave advantage. Problems that can be solved on both chips are solved faster on the D-Wave advantage. However, problems that fit well on the Chimera tend to perform worse on Pegasus. And we conjecture that additional unused couplers on Pegasus may disturb the annealing process. On the hybrid solver version 2, for garden problems, we found that they are better and 10 times faster than QBSolve with default parameters, and better at smaller problems than the hybrid solver service version 1, but worse at bigger ones. And for the hard multi-copy problems, constructed from the two satisfiability problems, cannot be solved by the D-Wave advantage, but can be solved on the hybrid solver version 2. Thank you, and we will be pleased to answer questions.